This is Money Guide with Mary Stirk from Stirk Financial Services. Now, here's Mary Stirk. What Kelsey and I do a lot of the day is create retirement strategies for people. (laughs) Absolutely. People spend their whole lives uh, saving up for retirement and then they want to retire, but they're not exactly sure how to turn all of the assets and the money that they've saved up into income. And so that's where we can really come in and help. And that's what today's going to be about. Yeah. And and let me just start off by saying there is a massive emotional paradigm shift that happens when you retire because you have spent your whole life, like Kelsey just said, building your, your money up, building your wealth up and telling yourself, I can't touch this money. Because this is for retirement. And so spending, you know, 40 years not touching the money and then all of a sudden being able to use the money, huge mental and emotional shift. And I see a lot of clients who will say, well, you know, I really don't want to touch that if I don't have to. And and that's great. But sometimes we have to get into that money because this is how you're going to retire. <laughs> so it's um, it's something to be aware of that you'll probably face. Now, the number one thing that I think that everybody wants in retirement is confidence, right? You want confidence in a couple different areas that you're making the right choices. And and the, the confidence that we're looking for is really to allay some of the fears that we have in retirement. So some of the fears that I think that we hear a lot, Kelsey, what would you say some of the main fears are that we have? Uh Probably one of the biggest one is running out of money. (laughs) Yep, that would be it. (laughs) I'm not going to have enough to get to the end of my life. Right. And, you know, that can take kind of um, a couple of different tacks. So it's, do I have enough money to go ahead and pull the retirement trigger? But it also is, well, what if I live too long and I outlive the money? Those are kind of two different things. And then I would say the third big fear that we hear is, well, what if I have a big health issue? How am I going to be able to take care of that? You know, how's my money going to take care of me? So a good retirement income strategy is going to create confidence that that all of those fears are addressed inside of it and then also give you the flexibility to allow your strategy to have some changes along the way because the reality is your life is going to change, right? You might retire when you're 65, but in the next 30 years of living, some things are going to change. Absolutely. You know, if you think about what might change, you could have more grandchildren, you could move, you could have a health issue. I mean, there's all sorts of different things that can affect a retirement and and have unexpected changes happen. So your retirement income strategy really has to be able to kind of mold and bend with that. So there's a couple of different ways that you can create strategy that is going to um, impact that. And one of the strategies that can be used is to put your money into different buckets, okay? And when we say buckets, I kind of look at it in terms of three different types of buckets. The first bucket always should be your emergency money, okay? And when you are before retirement, we generally say you need three to six months worth of emergency money. When you're in retirement, you normally need six to 12 months of retirement money, cash money sitting somewhere of what you are going to need to spend that year. Because if you have an emergency, your car breaks down, you need a new roof, you have a a health emergency and have to pay your deductibles, by golly, you want that cash sitting there and not at risk. Absolutely. And Mary, this is something that um, people need to understand. It needs to be liquid. It needs to be very easily accessible. This should not be money that is tied up. Um, in an investment account that has a charge to get the money out. Uh, It can be invested, but you want to pay close attention to the the amount of time you're expected to hold that money when it comes to your your emergency funds. Those need to be very accessible. So um, pay close attention to where those are located. You know, that's a really good point because sometimes people's biggest objections to having 12 months of living expenses in an emergency fund is, 
well, that's a lot of money and the bank isn't really paying a lot of interest. So I feel like I'm not making anything on that, right? But the reality is some of your money just needs to sit in the bank. (laughs) And so that's okay. But if you have a 12-month emergency fund, maybe about six months of the money can sit in the bank and the other six months could be invested in something that's very conservative, very low risk, but just has the ability to try to beat the bank in terms of interest rate potential. Anytime you have that ability or that potential, you have to remember that there's going to be some level of risk involved. You could have a loss. But um, the in terms of like splitting up your emergency money, I do fully believe that at least half of your fund should be sitting right in the bank. Yeah, you need to be able to get that today or tomorrow if you need to. Right. So that's bucket number one, liquid emergency money. Bucket number two is um, what we kind of like to call a fixed with fixed strategy, okay? And that's a term that we've made up. It's not a uh, investment theory that's out there. It's a term that we've made up by looking at how people actually spend money, looking at the patterns of behavior in retirement and understanding how you feel about retirement and these fears that really play into your decision making. So a fixed with fixed strategy is something that works like this. Number one, you have fixed bills, all right? So when you are going to pull that retirement trigger, we've talked before in different um, segments of this show about how important it is to know what your budget is going to be, okay? You need to know what's coming in for income and what's going out for expenses. But let's just target on these expenses. Kelsey, what what would you say are a handful of some of the main expenses that are fixed expenses that people are going to have? Fixed expenses would be anything that's a loan payment, um, whether it be a mortgage or a car payment or any other kind of loan payment. Uh, Your electric, your gas, your phone bill, your cable internet, anything that you pay every single month, regardless of what activity you do that month. Yep. Those are your fixed expenses. You know month in, month out you're going to have these expenses. Okay. One of the ideal ways to set up your retirement income is to make sure that you have a fixed source of income that is enough to cover your fixed expenses. All right. So that's why we call it fixed with fixed. <laughs> Pretty easy to understand. And so when I when I talk about fixed income streams, there's a whole bunch of different types of fixed income streams that are out there. So Social Security would be an example of a fixed income stream. Um, if you have interest from CDs at the bank, that might be a fixed income stream. If you have a pension, that might be a fixed income stream. If you have an annuity that's giving you an annuity payout every month, that would be a fixed income stream. So if you total up all of the different types of fixed income streams that you have, if they are enough to cover your fixed expenses, then you've got a good fixed with fixed strategy in play. Okay, And why is that important? Because if you have a set of incomes that is more of a guaranteed type of set of incomes, then you are going to have the confidence that all of those fixed expenses are covered. You're not going to walk into retirement thinking, oh my gosh, if the market crashes, all of a sudden I'm going to need to go get a job and I'm 82 and how is that going to work? You know, and so if you have your fixed incomes, Paying out enough money to cover those bills, it's going to enhance a level of confidence knowing that your basic needs are met. Okay? So that's kind of the fixed with fixed strategy. And then that would be your second bucket. So the first bucket was the emergency money. The second bucket is more of the fixed with fixed type of strategy. And the third bucket is really the long-term Um, flexible bucket of money that is kind of where everything else goes. We have an income strategies kit and it's got a budget in it so you can figure out what your expenses and your incomes are. And it's also got some information we've pulled together about transitioning into retirement and building your income streams within there. So give us a call 605-217-3555 and request that or you can go to sterkfinancialservices.com online and request it online. Congratulations to Mary Stirk and the team at Stirk Financial for earning a spot on two Forbes lists for six years running, including 2023 Forbes Best in State Wealth Advisors and 2023 Forbes Top Women Wealth Advisors Best in State, number one in South Dakota. So 
the first bucket that we talked about was emergency money for very short-term needs. The second bucket is to cover your actual fixed income needs with the fixed with fixed strategy. And the third bucket is what we call your liquid bucket, okay? And I cannot stress enough how important it is to retain some liquidity. And also remember that this liquid bucket does still have a long-term investment horizon. You may be in your retirement for 30 years and we need this money to last for 30 years. So you can't just all of a sudden stop thinking long-term and just think short-term because hopefully you do still have a long-term you know, outlook in your life with how this money's gonna last. All right, so why do we want liquidity? You want liquidity for a couple of different things. Number one, you want liquidity to do the fun stuff with. So if your fixed with fixed strategy is covering your your basic needs and your bills, your liquid pool of money is for things like travel, for things like buying a car, for things like gifts for your family, grandkid experiences, things like that. So those kind of things come out of this third bucket, this liquid bucket, okay? The other thing that the liquid bucket can do is help you offset the effects of inflation. And inflation is very real. You know, um, in the last maybe 40 years, inflation might have averaged around 4-ish percent. In the last 10 years, it's averaged less than 2%. So, I mean, we've had a massive decrease of inflation over the last few years. So who knows where it's going to go in the future? Probably up would be my guess, but I don't know. But inflation's crazy. Kelsey, when we do plans for people and kind of forecast what they're going to need in retirement, it starts to look a little nutty, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. You just can't even believe the numbers <laughs> that pop up when you apply just a simple 3 4% inflation. Right. And, and that means that what are you going to need later in life? 25 years from now, how much is it going to cost then to buy what your income today buys now? It doubles, triples, quadruples sometimes. So let's put that in just a little bit of perspective to help think about that. Most people who are 80 now, 80 today, paid more for their last car than they did their first house. (laughs) House. Think about that. I can't imagine paying what I paid for my house for a car in the next, you know, 40, 50 years. Well, maybe if it's a Tesla. (laughs) (laughs) Oh. But I'll tell you what, that's very true and inflation is very real. I mean, and, and even just to bring it down to small dollars, you know, your grandfather would have never believed that he was going to have to pay $4 for a gallon of milk when he could buy it for a dime, right? So inflation is real. Things get more expensive as time goes by and we have to account for that. So if your fixed with fixed strategy is designed to cover your bills and then your bills go up over time, if your fixed incomes don't inflate, you're going to end up with a gap. And this liquid pool of long-term money, part of its purpose, in addition to the fun things, is to help cover the gap that can be caused by inflation. So I think that's really important for you to think about and to factor into your decision making. Now, this liquid pool of money can be invested in a variety of different ways. If you have the stomach for it, maybe you look at stocks with that. Maybe you look at a balanced portfolio of stocks and bonds or mutual funds. Maybe you look at managed accounts. Maybe, you know, you look at, at, uh, if you're very, very conservative, it's still cash and CDs. There's a variety of different ways that you can invest that money. And I'm not suggesting on this show any one particular way that's the right way because it's very personal personal and it is entirely dependent on how you feel about risk. But my main point with this is that this bucket of money needs to be liquid and needs to be long-term focused. Okay. All right. So one of the things that's common inside of that longer term bucket is when people do use stocks to be paying attention to looking at ones that provide dividends because dividends can have some, some good favorable, um, benefits to them. Now, I am not a CPA and I'm not intending for this to be tax advice, but I will tell you that the the tax rates for dividends are more favorable to people than if you're just getting ordinary income off of something. Okay, so there's definitely a tax break if you have dividends. So for instance, um, your dividends might only be taxed at a 20% rate. And if you have a lot of income coming in retirement and your tax bracket is a 33% tax bracket, then those dividends are going to be really advantageous to you because you're saving money in taxes with them. 
Okay. So when you're when you're doing this longer term bucket planning, if you can focus on dividends, then that can be kind of a nice thing. So um, and, and why should you consider them? Part of the reason is historically how they've how they've kind of represented growth. So since 1926, dividend income has represented roughly one third of the total return on the Standard & Poor's index since then. Now, that's pretty significant that one third of the actual return in the market has come from dividends. So that's why I'm suggesting that something that you kind of pay attention to. <laughs> yeah, one third. Wow. So if you can, if you use those dividends as maybe your slush fund of cash, you can you can siphon the dividends off into a cash account and then utilize that for your fund money. Then you're not actually selling stocks or bonds or mutual funds to um, use the money out of that long-term pool. Um, Or you can reinvest them. And then the impact of dividends, if you reinvest them, kind of compounds over time. So that can be a smart strategy too. So when you um, are thinking about these things, just pay attention to the power of dividends that can be inside of, um, you know, your, your third bucket. So to recap, Your first bucket is that emergency money. Your second bucket is the fix with fix strategy. And the third bucket is the long-term bucket of um, liquid investments with the long-term horizon. Now, that is one strategy, using the bucket strategy. That is not the only strategy that everybody should use. Everybody's retirement planning is going to be personal for them. And um, if you don't have enough money to fill all the buckets, then you have to come up with a different strategy. Or if part of your goal is to um, give a lot of money away to charity at the end of your life, you might have a different strategy. Or if part of your goal is to leave a large legacy to your children, you might have a different strategy. So that's an example of one strategy that does address some of the fears of what if I live too long? Well, your fixed with fixed strategy helps make sure you have income for as long as you live, okay? What if I run out of money? Well, the fixed with fixed strategy allows you to not run out of money because those are lifetime income streams. What if I have a health issue come up? Well, that liquid long-term pool is designed for you to pull from if you have a health emergency and you need to pull from that, or you can pull it from your emergency money. So this type of strategy really does address how, you know, some of those main fears that people have. Absolutely. And I think the the key point in a lot of this is have a plan, know how your money works, (laughs) know how it's going to address your fears, know how it's going to work in retirement. If you just get to that age that you've always thought you retire, whatever it is, and you just pull the trigger and quit your job, and then you don't have a strategy and you don't have a plan, um, you might be making some mistakes simply because you just didn't forward look and you didn't plan ahead um, that could be avoided, that could have a long-term impact. So just have a plan when you're going into retirement on how you're going to address all those issues and how your money is going to work for you. Um, And that is one of the best things that you can do. You know, one of the common questions I get is, you know, to what age should I plan for for retirement? Which I, I, you know, that is going to be different for everybody too. But when we do a retirement plan for people, we do have to pick an age in which to kill them inside of our plan. And typically we use the age of 95 or 100. Um, and, and the reason that I do that is because age 95 or 100 probably is going to capture that lifetime, and I'm kind of erring on the side of conservative or erring on the side of caution with that. Statistically speaking, it's the mid to late 80s that that people's normal lifespan is going to go to. But you know, Kelsey, we've had all kinds of medical breakthroughs that that change lifespans of people and where we live longer. And so that's kind of a good rule of thumb is maybe what you think and add five to 10 years. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, rather be safe than sorry. You don't want to plan for 80 and then happen to live to your 90. Uh, it's 10 years that you didn't plan for that are still going to cost money. You're still going to live during that time. So absolutely. So give us a call. Request the income strategies kit that we've put together. It'll help you make some good decisions and really build your confidence as you move into that retirement transition. Um, of course, if you want to come talk to us and visit about, um, you know, 
how to set up your assets in the right strategy for you, we'd be happy to do that. Um, Give us a call 605-217-3555 or you can go to strictfinancialservices.com to request that. The last thing I want to talk about is that just around the corner, we have a great seminar coming up. It's called the Advanced Investment Strategies Seminar. This is not for beginners. This is for more sophisticated investors. And we'll be talking about positioning things in your portfolio beyond stocks and bonds. So not just necessarily the traditional investments, but definitely as you move into retirement, things, if you're more sophisticated, things that you want to decide, do you want to have in your portfolio to help round it out and to give you some really unique advantages. So sign up for that seminar and join us on June 14th. And uh, we'll be talking more about advanced investment strategies then. Thanks for joining us, and I hope you found this uh, information to be valuable as you craft your own retirement income strategy. The views expressed are not necessarily the opinion of your audio provider and should not be construed directly or indirectly as an offer to buy or sell any securities or services mentioned herein. Investing is subject to risks, including loss of principal invested. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. No strategy can ensure a profit nor protect against loss. Please note that individual situations can vary. Therefore, the information should only be relied upon when coordinated with individual professional advice. Securities and investment advisory services are offered through Woodbury Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA SIPC. Insurance offered through Sterk Financial Services, which is not affiliated with Woodbury Financial Services Incorporated. Neither Woodbury Financial Services Incorporated nor its representatives provide tax or legal advice. You should consult a qualified attorney or tax professional to answer your specific questions. Stirk Financial Services is located at 350 Oak Tree Lane, Suite 150, Dakota Dunes, South Dakota, 57049, and can be reached at 605 217 3555. Forbes Best in State Wealth Advisors list includes 10 recipients per state. The award is based on qualitative and quantitative data. Rating thousands of wealth advisors with a minimum of seven years of experience and weighing factors like revenue trends, assets under management, compliance records, industry experience, and best practices. The word is not based on portfolio performance or client reviews. There is no fee in exchange for rankings. Third-party rankings and recognitions are no guarantee of future investment success and do not ensure that a client or prospective client will experience a higher level of performance or results. These ratings should not be construed as an endorsement of the advisor by any client nor are they representative of any one client's evaluation.